If you're looking to make some lower thirds to identify people and don't want to pay those hefty template prices, we'll look no further because we're going to make it ourselves right here, right now, coming up. What's up media makers, in this episode we are going to take a look at how to create a slick lower third just like this. It's actually really easy and we're going to get this done in about 15 minutes maybe, that's just an estimate, but it's really not bad and you can use this over and over and it, just, it looks very clean and very slick and very minimalistic, it's beautiful. Alright, so how do we actually make this? Let's make a new comp, shall we? So I'm going to make a new comp and I'm just going to make it uh, 1920 by 1080 um, I'm going to make our frame rate to 30 and durations 10 seconds that's fine i'm just going to call this lower third all right so now let's start out and i'm just going to reference my comp one here that's uh, the composition this is in so first we want to make this square part right here and i'm going to just make a square and i want my stroke to be white and my fill to be nothing so then I'm going to set my stroke to like 3 or something. That's probably what I did in the other one. I don't exactly remember. Uh, but I'm just going to make a square here or a rectangle to fit our name in. All right. That should do it. Um, I'm going to also set my anchor point to the middle of this if you like this plugin. Um, it's really simple and easy, and it just moves your anchor point really quick. Um, you can check the link in the description below. I really like this plugin. Anyway, um, I'm going to move the anchor point to the center. That way, if we need to do any resizing, it's really easy to do that. All right, so um, it looks like it didn't accept my stroke, so I'm just going to type 3 in there again. Here we go. So now we have a white stroke. Um, actually, you know what? Let's make it 5. I think I like, I like that a little bit better. So we're going to make this a five point stroke. All right. So the next thing I want to do is add some text. I'm going to click my text tool and just type in my name. So right now it is right aligned. I prefer this to be left aligned right now. And I'm going to move my anchor point to the corner. And I'm going to set this right in the corner and then bring the size of this thing up. See, now we're going to probably want to kind of adjust the um, scale of our shape here. So I'm going to double click so that way I'm affecting the actual shape itself and I'm not actually um, affecting the size properties of this. So if I hit S um, and if I double click this, if we start adjusting this, we can see we're not affecting the scale of this layer at all. We're affecting the shape itself, not the layer. It's a very important distinction. So we're double clicking and adjusting the size and I'm just going to put it around the name here. I'm just going to make it a little bit taller. All right, so now I'm going to make this bottom part of the lower third, that square-ish area there. And for that, we don't need a stroke. And I'm going to make it orange, just like our other example. So I'm going to just pick an orange color here I like that. So now um, we don't have any stroke and we have a fill. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle here. I'm starting on the far edge, on the far left edge, and I'm just kind of dragging out. So I don't know, I'm kind of guessing the size here. So I'm just going to go about there maybe and unselect that. So as you can see, I um, started on the very edge. That's, that's what I was going for. All right, so now what I want to do is I kind of want to animate this line around um, our text here. Um, so I'm going to go to my original box, and I'm going to rename this to uh, main title box, just so we can differ differentiate it a little bit. And I'm going to hit my down arrow and go to add and add the trim paths effect. So when I drop that down and um, I just... I can adjust my start position, and if we zoom out a little bit, we can see what's happening here. Um, we are affecting where that line starts. Now, what we want it to do is kind of start right here in this corner. So that's what this offset is for. So if we start moving this offset, we can adjust where our start position is. So um, actually what I'm going to do, because uh, we want the start position to kind of stay in one spot, what we're going to try to adjust is our end position because that's going to come to about here-ish, as you can see. So I'm going to adjust my start to about there. 
So it's just over, leaving a little bit of gap in between our um, bottom rectangle here. And then I'm also going to adjust my end position to go to about that same amount of space. Now, if you want to get really refined in um, adjusting this, if you hold down Command or Control, if you're on a uh, Mac, you want to do Command, and hold that down as you drag this, um, you will drag it in smaller increments so you can get really refined. And I think that that's doable, definitely doable. All right, so now I want to animate it. Um, we got it in the right position. We got our offset in the right position. Um, so for me, it's about negative 177 degrees, and then um, we're adjusting our end position. So what I want to do is I'm going to go about a second in time and hit um, our keyframe, because this is what our end uh, property is. This is how we want it to look at the end. So now we're going to drag forward in time and set this to zero, I guess. So that's, um, I'm just typing in zero here. Click and type in zero. And then that looks like it's gone, but it's actually just going to animate over this span of time, starting at nothing. There we go. All right, so now we want to give it a little bit more of a fluid motion. So I'm gonna zoom out to full width here. And if we select both of these and hit F9, what that does is it adds easy ease to these keyframes. So now it adds a little bit more of a fluid motion just a little bit though. What I want to actually do is really refine that even more by using our graph editor. So if we click um, on this property on one of these keyframes and go to this button right here, our graph editor, um, we can adjust um, how quickly things happen. So what I want it to do is I want it to leave our starting point really fast and then really slowly go into our ending point. So to do that, I'm gonna drag this up and then drag this out. So what's happening here, and I'm gonna kind of zoom in here, what's happening is we're starting out really fast and then over time we're slowly and slower and getting slower and slower and slower, um, if that makes any sense. So let, let's just watch this, watch this represented here. So as we can see, it starts out really, really, really fast over here almost too fast and we can adjust that but just to get the idea um, we're starting out really fast and we're getting slower as we move on so it's almost too fast so what I want to do is I want to just adjust this keyframe to about the two second point yeah I think that works um, I'm going to make this not uh, jump out so fast I still want it to jump out fast but uh, we're just kind of fine-tuning things here so the next thing I'm going to do is definitely add some text on this orange line. Um, so I'm going to hit my text tool and I'm just going to say motion graphics artist. And I want my text to be a little bit smaller here. I'm going to move my anchor point to the corner. Okay. Um, so right now this is under the layer, so I'm going to move it on top. So I'm going to call this orange, orange layer. All right, and I'm just going to make this this text a more of a bold text. Oops, let's actually have it selected. That might that might help me out. There we go. And I'm going to scale this thing down. All right. So I'm just going to kind of center it up into place here. If I deselect, I can get a better idea of where this is at. We'll move it in the center there. All right, cool. So the next thing I, I need to do now that we have this text in here is I need to actually animate the uh, box behind it. So if I um, go to the starting point, actually what I should do is go a couple seconds in time and set my keyframe for the scale. So I'm gonna hit my orange layer, go to uh, S for scale, hit S. And what I want to do is I would just want to update the scale of the x-axis. But if I do that here, I'm actually updating the scale of both. So I want to unlink my x and y axis. And the next thing I want to do is set my anchor point to one side. So I'm going to set my anchor point to the um, right side. So I'm going to hit this. So if I start adjusting the scale, it goes to that point. So it's coming out of that point. So I'm going to hit my um, keyframe, move a little bit in time, and set this to zero. 
All right, so for me, that's pretty slow, so I'm going to bring that in and select both of these, hit F9 for easy ease. A little bit better. Um, the next thing I want to do is go into my graph editor and just bring these out so it starts and ends really slow, but in the middle it's really fast. Yeah, I like that. It's maybe a little bit too much. We'll bring, bring it in a hair, but you, you get the idea. Yeah, there we go. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is um, add the kind of white area behind that. It kind of happens really fast in our example, but as you can see when we start scrubbing through this, the white shows up first. So really all we need to do is duplicate this orange layer. So I'm gonna actually bring this a little bit back in time and then just make sure this layer is selected and go Command or Control D, drag this below it, and then I need to change my fill to white and then drag my layer forward in time a little bit. So it happens before, and I'm gonna change this to white layer. So now, beautiful. So the only thing when it comes to the bottom line that we have left to do is um, revealing that bottom text because we don't want it there initially. So if we just duplicate our orange layer and then drag it on top, now, you might have kind of the view that I have here, and it's not showing. If you if this looks like what your computer looks like, uh, just hit this toggle switches and modes, and we'll go to our, um, our text here and go to alpha matte orange layer. So now, um, our text only shows up when the orange layer is covering it. There we go. All right, so the very last thing we need to do is animate our um, top, te top, te top text. Excuse me, I can't talk. So I'm going to select my name, and I'm going to just affect the position. So I'm going to hit P. And one thing to note, when you're using the graph editor, for some reason, um, it doesn't like you using the graph editor for position unless your um, X and Y um, are separated in position. So the way to do this, and I'm just telling you this in advance because I ran into this problem, if you right click on position and do separate dimensions, now you can affect just the X and Y. In our case, we only want to affect the Y. So I'm going to drag this up. Um, actually, I always forget to do this. I'm going to drag to the position or the point in time that I want this to be here, set a keyframe. Now just move backwards and then move this above where our line will be. So there we go, that's above the line. So now if I select these, do F9, go into our graph and pull these out. I'm gonna kinda do that uh, fast in the middle kinda thing. There we go. So now we just need to get this to reveal at the right time when it's inside this area. So if I just go and make a new layer and I just drag over here. I'm basically saying when you're in this area, then you can show yourself, essentially is what I'm saying. So I'm drawing that area for After Effects. So I'm going to call this matte name. So it's the matte for the name. So I'm going to drag this on top of my text and then do pretty much the same thing we did for the bottom text. So now when it's in that area, it shows itself. And one thing I'm noticing is it's actually a little too high, very slightly here. So all we have to do is go into that matte name and get our selection tool and just bring this down. And I'm actually going to bring it to the bottom of our line. There we go. Not a big problem. All right, there we go. So if you like this lower third, I also put a link in the description to this actual project file so you can go in um, and kind of mess with this yourself or just use this template um, completely for free. I also put in another lower third um, that you might like and it kind of looks like that. Um, let's have that rendered, there we go. Um, so if that's more on your style, you can go in and change the colors however you want. Um, or just kind of play around with this, you know, whatever you want to do. And, I mean, if you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe. We have a new video every Tuesday and Thursday. And please hit that like button because it really helps me out. Um, if you like doing this kind of stuff, then I really think you'll get a lot out of this channel. All right, so, guys, thank you so much. If you are interested in any other videos, go ahead and click those on your screen right now. And I will see you in the next video.